Hello listeners, welcome to my new podcast series, Autism Weekly. Today I will be talking about the autism condition that have many people autism. I feel like this is a very misunderstood topic that affects many people. This series will consist of three podcasts. In this podcast, I will be answering the question, what is autism? So, what is autism? First of all, I should make it clear that it is nearly impossible to pinpoint what autism is exactly. People need to understand that autism is different for every person. This is just how I would explain it to someone. Autism is a neurological condition, neuro meaning the brain, that affects approximately 1 in 100 people. Autism is just one part of a wider range of conditions known as the autism spectrum. This spectrum is not, not only made up of autism, but other conditions such as Asperger's syndrome, Rett syndrome and childhood disintegrative disorder. It affects people in three main ways, communication difficulties, problems with social interactions and competitive behaviours. Autistic people have a higher percentage of having a learning disability, such as dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, dysgraphia and ADD slash ADHD than non-autistic people. Most children start showing symptoms before their second birthday. A few symptoms to look out for are avoiding eye contact, isolating themselves, repetitive words or phrases, also known as echolalia, repetitive behaviour, senses are heightened such as sound, texture and smell, challenging behaviour sometimes such as meltdowns and random outbursts, taking phrases literally, gets distracted, uncomfortable to change. Autistic people also have a higher percentage of developing depression or anxiety. Because of this, there is also a higher suicide risk for autistic people. I carried out a survey among my peers. Most had some knowledge on autism, but many thought it was caused by the MMR vaccine. It is in fact a genetic disorder, but we don't know which gene caused it. Autism is not caused by the MMR vaccine. Demographic does not affect an autism diagnosis. It can appear in any person in any age, regardless of their social class or gender. However, four times more boys than girls get diagnosed. This is due to misdiagnosis in girls and their ability to mask. Masking is when an autistic person is able to mimic non-autistic people's behaviours to blend in and disguise their autism. This includes making eye contact, socialising, learning conversation topics other people will be interested in, and practising how to act. Most people on the autism spectrum have an average to above average IQ and are more likely to excel at one topic more than the others. These may include math, music and art. This could be due to the fact that autistic people are good at looking at attention to detail. I gather some vox pops about what people think autism is. So, what do you think autism is? Well, there's a huge spectrum of autism, so you can't really put it down to one thing. Right. Some people say it is a disability, but then again, autism can always give birth to a talent of their own. Uh, what do you think autism is? There is an organisation called the National Autistic Society which has a website and a YouTube channel that gives people clearer understanding of what autism is. There is also a video on the YouTube channel called Can You Make It To The End? In it, a boy with autism is walking through a mall with his mum and he shows his reactions to his surroundings. I made a similar segment about how an autistic person perceived the world while walking down the street. Warning! This will include a loud volume of noise that could be triggering to some autistic people. If you get uncomfortable around loud noises, then I suggest you skip over the next couple of minutes of this podcast. You are walking down the street. A car zooms past you. Closely followed by a police car. You 
grab how's the group of people talking? Sounds excruciating. The baby screen pierces through her ears. And that's just the sound you can hear. Imagine the smells, such as smoking, and the brightness of the sun feeling like it's blinding you. There are many stores around the UK which have autism friendly hours, but there is less noise and it is less crowded. For more information, visit the National Autistic Society website and YouTube channel. Many different shows and movies have tried to tackle the topic of autism. However, I realised that most of the symptoms added are just stereotypes and are overly done for comedic purposes. I'll be talking about two shows that discuss autism, the first one being Atypical and the second one will be Sesame Street. Typical is a show that currently has two seasons out on Netflix. The show centres on an 18 year old with autism, Sam Gardner, who wants to start dating. It should be said that the main actor who portrays Sam is not on the spectrum, which immediately creates an issue. Because the main character's actor is not actually on the spectrum, most of the symptoms that Sam shows are over the top and exaggerated. An example of this is when Sam talks without filtering what he says. Although this is very common for autistic people, Sam does it in almost every episode, with almost every line he says. There are some things that are portrayed accurately throughout the show, such as Sam's obsession with penguins, which is brought up many times throughout the show. Autistic people tend to be obsessed with one thing, and it tends to be their way of helping them understand the world and escaping reality. I really like how this is portrayed, 
I also like how if Sam gets stressed or upset, he lists species of penguins in alphabetical order to help him calm down. This is put in accurately because obviously people tend to enjoy repetition and repeating phrases. Season 2 has introduced a support group for Sam. The people in the support group are portrayed by autistic actors and actions. This is a positive step forward since these characters will portray a more accurate representation of people on the autism spectrum. Currently, the show has been renewed for a third season, however there is no information yet on what it will be about. I personally hope it will focus on Sam adjusting to the changes in college, because change is something a lot of autistic people struggle with. I would also like more time spent with the support group and the other autistic people, so the audience can get a better, and hopefully more accurate, representation of autism. Overall, although this show does show many stereotypes of autism, I think it portrays some of it correctly, and I'm glad that they are now introducing more people on the spectrum into the show. The second show I would like to talk about is Sesame Street. We can all be friends. We can all be friends. We can all be Back in 2015, Sesame Street released a new Muppet known as Julia. Julia is a four-year-old Muppet who has autism. This kind of representation in a children's show is very important, since Sesame Street's purpose is to educate young children as young as three years old about the world. Julia is first introduced on the screen in 2017 in an episode appropriately called Meet Julia. The episode, obviously, introduces everyone to Julia, but it also introduces them to what the world is like through an autistic person's eyes. The episode starts off with Elmer, Abby and Julia drawing until Big Bird arrives and tries to introduce himself to Julia. Julia does not respond to Big Bird's greeting, which is an accurate response from some autistic people who are more severe on the spectrum. The actor Alan explains to Big Bird that Julia has autism and may not respond straight away. Big Bird asks Alan what autism is, and Alan responds by starting his answer with, For Julia, autism is. This is very important because it immediately explains to the viewers that autism is not the same for everyone without it being told in an in-your-face kind of way. Everything is alright until a siren goes off and Julia has a meltdown. The meltdown is not portrayed as being overly dramatic. However, it is portrayed in a way that will be understandable to the target audience watching the show. Alan takes Julia away so she can calm down. And when Big Bird, Abby and Elmo talk about what happened, Big Bird says that he did not think the siren was very loud, which could infer that he thinks Julia was overreacting, which is very common with non-autistic people. Elmo and Abby explain to Big Bird how Julia is sensitive because of her autism. In the end of the episode, Julia calms down and is able to play again. In 2018, Sesame Street had a parade called Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which Julia attended. She is seen on the float with many of her other Muppet friends, however, Something very important came to a lot of people's attention. Julia was wearing soundproof headphones. Again, this is extremely important for autism representation because it is very realistic for autistic people to dislike loud noises, so they tend to wear headphones or ear defenders to block out the sound. This makes autistic people able to see themselves more in Julia and relate to her more since they will probably be wearing noise cancelling headphones as well. This will also, hopefully, make non-autistic people more aware and understanding of people with autism. Overall, I think this episode is very important to educate people about what autism is. I feel like it is very important to educate young people about this very misunderstood condition. I also feel like Sesame Street portrays autism in a more accurate way than atypical does. Thank you for listening to this episode of Autism Weekly. Make sure you tune in next week for the third and final episode where I'll be doing Vox Pops with people with autism. I'd also like to give credit to Atypical who actually owns a song I use during this podcast. Welcome back to the series Autism Weekly. Today we'll be talking to many people who are both on the spectrum and people who have friends or family members on the spectrum to see how autism affects them on a day-to-day basis. I will be gathering box pops from the various people about their opinions. Are from 
people are on the spectrum. The questions I've chosen to ask them are related to how they deal with autism in their life. How long have you known that you have autism? I've known I've had autism for quite a few years. How does it affect you? It affects me by me feeling extra sensitive to stuff. So like with sounds I can pick up on um, all sorts of things. It's not just me focusing on one. Like I would hear many conversations and I'd feel like in a cramped space even though I was spaced out. What advice do you have for autistic people? I would say if you just need that time to recover or relax, just use that time and just don't feel pressured um, with school or college. Like you are your own person and it's completely fine to do whatever you would want to do. And if you need that time out, go and take it. How long have you known that you have autism? Don't know. But how does it affect you in your life? It's hard to say for some, for some of it, it's hard to say because I have different things like that. I struggle, different things that I struggle with for different things. Like, I don't know what things are for what things. Like. Do you have any advice for autistic people who might be struggling? Not really, because I don't think I've had this part not long. I've also asked many people who deal with people on the spectrum about what coping mechanisms and help there is for autistic people. However, as I've already said, autism affects people in different ways, so the coping mechanisms suggested may not work for everyone. Do you have any coping mechanisms for autistic people if they're feeling stressed or uncomfortable? I would say a quiet area. What would you suggest for any non-autistic people to do if they see an autistic person having a meltdown? Not to approach them and get in their personal space. What would you suggest for parents or teachers about com coping with the changes in surroundings such as transitioning from primary school to high school and then to college? To make sure all key workers who are working alongside that student are kept in detail with rooms, any important information that the student needs to know, and stuff like that. Do you have any coping mechanisms for autistic people who are feeling stressed or uncomfortable? An autistic person could use um, a fidgeting device, like a, a tangle or a piece of rope. That sometimes helps certain people. Um, access to a quiet room is usually one of the, the best things that they could use. Um, and having people around them that understand them. What would you suggest to a non-autistic person to do if they see an autistic person having a meltdown? To leave them alone, don't approach them, to take some understanding that they might not be seeing the world the same way that this autistic person is. What would you suggest to parents or teachers who are coping with changes in surroundings, such as transitioning from primary school to high school and then to college? I think the best thing that we can do is that all teachers and anybody involved with our student pass along the relevant information on how that person is best supported and how they cope, but to also to make sure that there's plenty of time between transitions to get that person comfortable with new surroundings. Do you have any coping mechanisms for autistic people if they're feeling stressed out? We use quite a few uh, breathing techniques and mindfulness techniques. We use a thing called Peace Begins With Me, where we put the index finger and thumb together, then the middle finger and thumb together, then the ring finger and thumb, and then the little finger and thumb, while saying, Peace Begins With Me. And that's really helpful. It stimulates uh, pressure points on the fingertips that actually physiologically make you feel calmer. We also use attention to parts of your body, so um, maybe tense up your toes and then relax them, tense up your ankles and then relax them and go all the way from your toes to your head. What would you suggest for any non-autistic people to do if they see an autistic person having a meltdown? Really important that they would stay calm themselves and to use a very uh, quiet tone of voice. Probably not to look at them directly too much. Try and make sure that they're safe wherever they are, remove things that they could hurt themselves on and I would say only to really deal with it with that person if you are kind of experienced and qualified to work with that person otherwise let someone who knows them deal with them but most importantly stay calm and be fairly quiet and kind of try to reassure them it'll be okay. 
Authority suggests from parents or teachers about coping with changes in surroundings to transitioning from mm. school. Um, the, the whole business of transitions within a, a sort of a public building are really difficult because most transition areas make it even harder because they'll potentially say in a doorway you might have a change of um, texture, you might have up, it up until the way door um, hard floor up beyond it and these things that a lot of people don't understand they're hidden barriers because that line on the floor can act as a psychological barrier um, some people with autism find it easier to transition if they've got something heavy to carry so to just say well would you mind taking this big pile of books to the next lesson with you I know that a lot of schools give people a hall pass a few minutes before the bell so that it's easier for someone who's overstimulated by crowds to get from A to B without the noise and the hubbub. So a lot of schools are getting doing it right, but I think to keep on doing the research on the hidden barriers um, to transition would be useful. Do you have any coping mechanisms for autistic people if they're feeling stressed? If there's loud uh, noises or anything, um, use uh, earphones or soundproofing earphones to uh, support and calm the young person down. Also have uh, little twizzlers so that um, they can play with or fidget with while they're listening to tutor um, giving a lecture and also a uh, coloured paper. I'm working with one young person at the moment when he feels stressed if I give him um, a card, a yellow card that's uh, covered in uh, laminated um, he likes to look at that and it really calms him down for him to have probably about five minutes time out within the lesson what would you suggest for any non-autistic person to do if they see an autistic person having a meltdown? Um, I'd suggest that they stay calm. If they feel that they can't um, deal with the, the person who's having a meltdown, to then go and get an appropriate learning support worker or tutor um, to calm uh, the person down. What would you suggest for parents or teachers about coping with changes in the surroundings, such as transitioning from primary school to high school and then college? I think transitioning is uh, really important that uh, the young person who's transitioning is aware of that transition and work with the young person um, at their pace to be able to transition from, say, school into college so that learning support workers um, actually go out to schools and meet the young people that are going to transition into college so that they already know a couple of the members of staff that will be supporting them within the college environment and then um, support workers in place to do meet and greets to alleviate any stresses that the young person might have because they might not know which classroom they're going into or how to get around college initially and then work with them at their pace to be able to then independently move around and uh, go to uh, the lessons on their own and then the support worker meet them at their lessons. After listening to the box pops you will now know that there are many coping mechanisms for people on the spectrum. However, there are still many more coping mechanisms and support out there for autistic people. For more information all about autism, make sure you check out https colon forward slash forward slash www.autism.org.uk That's https colon forward slash forward slash www.autism.org.uk I highly recommend this website since I found it very informative and it helped me a lot while I was researching information for this podcast. Thank you for listening to my third and final podcast in this series. I hope you found this podcast series informative about autism. Make sure you share this series with your friends and family if they have any questions about autism that they would like answered.